what also starts, you know, as I said, what starts to happen is we have white flight. So white people start leaving, leaving these areas for, for the suburbs um, and suburban, you know, middle class um, life. So like during this time, you know, 300,000 people leave for the suburbs, um, you know, and and what starts to happen is these, you know, these groups had some means is you have large pockets of blacks, um, you know, uh, and Puerto Rican, Dominican, you know, Afro-Cuban um, diaspora people that are like stranded in the South Bronx with this crazy construction going on, um, no social services, and you start to see the beginning of what's called um, broken windows philosophy for policing, and this is a criminology uh, concept um, where stop and frisk, if you're familiar with that, which was uh, prominent in New York City for a long time, the idea behind broken windows police philosophy is um, efforts to curb crime, like misdemeanor crimes or nonviolent crimes, like graffiti, vandalism, selling loose cigarettes, whatever, whatever it is, right? Like when you, the, 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 the real idea is if when someone walks into a neighborhood and there's graffiti everywhere, windows are smashed out and they perceive it to be a lawless area, they commit harder crimes in those places like, like murder, burglary, theft, what, whatever it is. So this police concept or this criminology concept is if you can punish heavily the graffiti writers, the vandals, etc., that you'll curb hard crime. And it's actually... There's no proof that it actually has ever has ever worked, and so um, that's kind of a, an important um, you know concept to know also for the for the for the test. The other thing that you have also going on in this area is is redlining, and um, y'all should know what this is. Y'all should learn about this. But redlining is basically, if you want to think about it literally, if you know, make a red line around an area, in this case, the South Bronx. Let's just literally make an air, a red line around it. And it means that, you know, banks won't loan money for development in these areas, that insurance companies won't insure uh, property owners in this area, that loans won't be made in this area, um, you know, and it's often highly racialized, highly problematic. You probably heard a lot about it. You know, it's a form of, um, you know, institutional, you know, racism um, that's been prominent in, in a lot of places in, in America, um, and it manifests in different, different ways. But the way that we can think, I mean, you can think of it to like food, you know, like a lot of areas that, you know, are, are redlined, like you can't get affordable organic produce there, but you can get fast food, you know, st stuff like that, they become food deserts. And um, so again, what further complicated this was the fact that like, you know, you couldn't get a loan to develop property in, this, in the South Bronx, you know? Um, and so this further complicated everything. Now, what also uh, added to this all was how the media dealt with it, how they sensationalized it, um, how they focused on the violence, how they, you know, they focused on the fires. They didn't focus on the good that was that was going on. So this, if you can just kind of imagine again, this is you know, uh, you know, 50, 50 years ago or so, 60 years ago, which is a long time. But you know, just think about New York City that you know and see now, and how different it is than like this really, really just sort of like sad in many ways place in terms of like if you were to see it as an outsider looking in, but there was a lot of love there. There was a lot of people who, who, loved, who loved it there um, and loved the diversity of it, despite um, you know, everything that was going on and, and how the, the chips were stacked against them in so many, in so many ways. But.